What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today, the Destiny development team released a big update about Crimson Days, the next big live event coming soon to Destiny 2, with a main focus on the new loot coming with this live event, and exactly how you're going to get that loot. And so, let's get started. Now, this is the second live event to hit Destiny 2. The first one was The Dawning, and there's no other way around it. The Dawning was heavily criticized for basically being an update to Eververse, right? Everything you earned via The Dawning was also just purchasable via Eververse, aside from like one or two things, and it just felt like the focus was clearly in selling more microtransactions. Well, the community did complain, and credit where credit is due, Bungie seems to have massively addressed this. So let's go over what is exactly coming when Crimson Days hits. And by the way, Crimson Days is going to arrive the reset of February 13th, which is a Tuesday, and it's gonna go away the following reset on the 20th of February. So firstly, in terms of actual content, there's going to be a brand new 2v2 Crucible playlist. This new game mode is basically 2v2 Clash. It's all about the kills, but with a little bit of a twist. If you're near your teammate, your abilities will recharge faster. So you're gonna have to think, do I split up and flank the enemy team, which can be incredibly useful, or do I stick next to my teammate, get my grenades and my class ability and so on faster? So hopefully that will be a fun addition. Now on top of this new game mode, there will be a semi new map being added to Destiny 2. It's called The Burnout, and it is a Destiny 2 take on the Burning Shrine which of course was a map from Destiny 1. Now a lot of people absolutely love the Burning Shrine. It was a pretty competitive map, saw a lot of play, especially on Trials over the years. And so I'm sure a lot of people are very happy the Burning Shrine is coming back. Kind of sad we aren't getting a brand new map, but frankly, there's a lot of great Destiny 1 maps. I almost rather them have the for sure thing of a great playing map than just potentially have something terrible. But moving on, let's talk about the actual loot coming with Crimson Days. So, most of the loot is earnable through Crimson Engrams, which are similar to the previous Dawning Engrams that have their own unique loot pool of unique, this time, Crimson Days rewards. So, how do you get Crimson Engrams? Well, starting February 13th, you're going to, every time you level up, after you've reached the max level, which is level 25 if you have expansion 1, level 20 if you don't, instead of just getting an illuminated engram, you're still going to get one of those, but you're also going to get a crimson engram. So that means you can do literally anything you want in the game. You can grind lost sectors if you want to, you can do the crucible, you can do raids, you can do strikes, whatever, and you're just gonna level up like you normally would. But instead of getting those normal illuminated engrams, again, you're gonna be getting those special crimson engrams, which is going to come with a bunch of loot. Some of it pictured here. Now, in addition to that, some great news, the crimson engrams loot is operating on a knockoff list, according to Bungie. And what that means is that you're going to get different loot every single time. You're gonna knock different loot off this list essentially until you've gotten literally everything and then you're gonna finally start to get duplicates. And that's just gonna maximize your rewards. If you level up, you're gonna always be guaranteed something new and that's actually pretty sweet. Now looking at this Crimson Days loot, we've got some brand new emotes, including an exotic emote. We have a new exotic sparrow. We've got some new exotic ornaments, got a bunch of ghosts and some shaders, transmat effects, and so on. Pretty standard for these live events. But moving on from there, there is some more unique rewards that are earnable through specific activities. So there are five new rewards found exclusively for players who complete the following. Number one, Complete the milestone Welcome to Crimson Days by finishing five Crimson Days matches and visiting Lord Shacks in the tower to earn the Fire of Crimson Days emblem and the Trastella Ghost Shell. Again, you have to do that activity and then you will earn those rewards. Number two, complete matches in the Crimson Days Crucible playlist for a chance to earn the Undeterred Exotic Sparrow, pictured here. 
Moving on from there, complete either the Leviathan Raid or the Raid Layer Eater of Worlds to claim the Diesel Punk Exotic Ornament for the Wardcliffe Coil pictured here from the final chest. And then lastly, Complete the Nightfall Strike during the Crimson Days event to earn the Flaunting Dance Emote pictured here. Now Eververse will still have a minor presence because there will be the direct items on sale uh, during the week. They're going to reset daily and if you want to buy one of those for Bright Dust, you can of course do that. Also, in case you were wondering, anything purchased with Bright Dust will include the knockout effect, so you won't be getting that reward via Crimson Engrams after that point. But actually, you will not be able to buy Crimson Engrams directly from Eververse, and this was confirmed by uh, DMG04, a community manager at Bungie's tweet saying, Crimson Engrams are only earnable through gameplay. So again, dialing back Eververse for sure compared to the Dawning, and so that's a great thing. I'm gonna, again, give praise where praise is due. I don't wanna see Eververse too involved, and it looks like this time they aren't. So, quite a lot of information, but what does this mean for you? What does this mean for the average Destiny player? Well, it is kind of neat that we're getting a new game mode, we're getting a new map, and I'm definitely going to hop on during the week of Crimson Days, and I'm gonna play that 2v2 event. And if it's fun, I'll keep playing it. I'll probably play quite a bit. And the new rewards, some of them, like the new Exotic Sparrow, uh, some of the new emotes especially, that's sweet, and they seem to be earnable in a reasonable fashion, just playing the game and leveling up. I'm happy about all of that stuff. I'm sure that the player count will surge over the week of Crimson Days, people just getting on, doing some milestones, earning some of those rewards, and then probably getting back off. Is there any lasting effects from this live event? Well, that's where the downside of this live event does come in. Again, it's been very positive up to this point because there is so many improvements over the original Dawning Live event. Like Bungie, if you're watching, this is a step in the right direction. Absolutely a step in the right direction. But there needs to be one more step in the right direction. And by that I mean there needs to be reasonable, long-lasting rewards that impact gameplay. What am I talking about there? Weapons. We have a first person shooter on our hands with Destiny 2. It's all about the weapons. Everyone's trying to get the raid weapons, the trials weapons, the faction rally weapons. Weapons are the thing that makes the world of Destiny 2 churn. It's the loot you're really trying to go after 99% of the time. And the best example of this is Call of Duty World War 2. And you're probably like, what? Where the heck is this guy going with this? But I do play probably an unreasonable amount of Call of Duty World War II. I don't even think it's that good of a Call of Duty. The Pick 10 system was way better, but that is a side. The reason I bring this up is because Call of Duty is having its own version of a live event right now called The Resistance. It's added a bunch of new stuff to its loot pool. It has supply drops that are earnable through gameplay. Like you can also buy them, but they're mostly earnable through contracts and daily quests and so on, or just given out randomly. Very similar to the Crucible, or sorry, the Crimson Days Engrams that are coming with this event. And there's a bunch of new resistance items added into the game. But importantly, and the reason I bring this up is because they also added new weapons. There's a brand new assault rifle, the Volkstrom Gamir, <laughs> that was added and it's an absolute beast. And they also added a new Orso SMG. The thing is, the Call of Duty community is absolutely freaking out over these guns. That's what everyone wants to get. The good news is that they are available through like special quests where if you complete 50 matches, you will get these weapons outright. You, you don't just have to rely on the supply jobs, which is all good. But it's really funny to see that all of the other stuff in the loot pool, which includes pistol grips, emblems, and title cards, and outfits like the Armor of Destiny 2, and even jesters, aka emotes, are all considered trash in those supply jobs. Everyone is disappointed when they get anything other than the weapons. So think about that for a sec. Destiny 2 is just adding, basically through the same fashion, what's considered the trash in Call of Duty World War II. Because again, the focus is all on the weapons. That's what everyone wants because it is what impacts your gameplay, the actual weapon you're using. 
So Bungie's gonna have to take a little bit of page out of Call of Duty, which is surprising to say, but you're gonna have to introduce actual weapons. And why not weapons with unique perks? The weapons have static roles, so you can design weapons however you want, Bungie. Why isn't there new Crimson Days weapons that come with special Crimson Days perks? For example, if you stand near um, your teammate with a new Crimson Days auto rifle, it's gonna reload substantially faster than if you're standing out by yourself. Like, what would be wrong with a weapon like that? Even if it wasn't good, everyone would be trying to get these new Crimson Days weapons. That is how you spice up the game. And because Bungie chose to go with this static roll system, it means that the only way to increase the diversity of the game is to add actual new weapons. Now, I will say there actually was a hidden-ish weapon with the dawning with the Zephyr Sword. Hopefully, Crimson Days also introduces something like this, but it should be more than like one hidden item. It should be a full set of Crimson Days weapons, a Crimson Days SMG, hand cannon, and so on. That is how you get people back into the game. Hey, come and earn these exclusive weapons for this Crimson Days event. And every event should feature something like that. Again, the static roll system demands an influx of brand new weapons in order to diversify the game. If you don't have the time or resources to make new weapons every time you do a live event, Bungie, then you shouldn't have done the static roll system. <laughs> Seriously. So the only option here is to buckle up and start making some new weapons. 95% of the people have left the game. It's no time to be lazy now. We've got to go full bore. That's how you're going to improve the game. And again, this is a great step forward. Don't think I'm just crapping on Bungie nonstop because this is so much better than the dawning. But one more step into practical game rewards and then live events are going to be lit. And then Destiny 2 will be in a much better position. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. Now, if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickCacus. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.